in a mud run, the primary obstacle, as you may expect, is mud. Competitors must combine skills in cross country with endurance and stamina in order to complete the race as fast as possible. The focus on mud running events is however more on having fun as opposed to elite performance. Many competitors enter to raise money for charities and others as a test of their own physical ability. Simon Crawford is the founder of the Muddy Trials event and holds two races per year at his home, Crawford Lind Estate. The, the estate dates back to, well, before our family had it, but there, our family had been here since uh, 1245. The first laird of Crawford Lind was uh, in 1245, John Crawford, the second son of Sir Reginald de Crawford, of, the Sheriff of Ayr from Loudoun at the time. The estate is all um, family owned. Um, the main estate is a limited company which is owned by myself, my older brother and my older sister and the castle is owned by myself and my wife. It's, there's a constant need for repairs and renovations. At the moment, um, probably our next biggest project will be looking at um, one of the attics. We have a suspicion there might be wet rot, so that could be uh, thousands of pounds to ten thousand of pounds to potentially hundred thousand pounds. We don't know. We're hoping it's going to be the the smaller of those, but we don't know yet. Um, we came up with the mud running idea um, after we had been involved with the Channel Four TV program, Country House Rescue. Um, they brought in a consultant to kind of give us various ideas, and uh, Kester Wilkinson was brought in from Mud Runner, and uh, he came round and saw that we had lots of mud. And, and therefore we would be uh, very well suited for doing a run run and that's where that came from. So that started uh, a year ago now in March last year. We started organising this race um, in early January and then obviously the race took place late March um, and that was a bit tight time wise. So we are starting to organise the next one which is in six months time almost immediately. When Simon took over the running of the estate, the costs of maintaining the castle were escalating and without another source of income, he would eventually be forced to sell. The upkeep of the land is a full-time commitment for Simon. Four days before the race, Simon and his co-workers take a full day of work to clear the ditches of any woodland debris. Oh, it's getting deeper. Right, I'm telling you, this bit's the muddy. The setup for the course, um, for us, is relatively straightforward because we use mainly existing and natural features on the estate. All the ditches and the muddy pools and uh, the terrain that is used is, is all as was before we did the first race. We haven't actually created any of the obstacles, we've just taken things that were already there. We do um, make sure that they're safe through uh, cleaning the ditches and the like, but we haven't created anything um, specifically for the run. Uh, over the three runs we've had, we have had relatively few injuries. Um, the first race, just the odd cuts and bruises. The second race, we had one of the ditches must have had some sort of object in it. We had maybe five or ten people with a similar injury, which they'd all sustained, I think, from the same ditch. And in that race, we also had somebody actually managed to break their ankle. Uh, but that was being slightly over-exuberant, getting into a ditch that wasn't really full enough of, of mud. Uh, and this last race, Touchwood, we were very lucky. We had very few um, injuries at all. We, I think the only incident we had that was requiring any assistance was one of the children got particularly cold on the muddy mile and refused to go any further, so we sent the ambulance to go and get them.
numbers that we've had through the mud runs has steadily grown um, since our first one. Our first one was um, just over a hundred uh, runners for the two races. Um, for the next one, we were about 360, and this most recent one, we think we had about 420. So the numbers are steadily growing um, as people learn about the race, and uh, there's very much a lot of word of mouth um, in terms of growing the numbers. Take care getting in and out of the ditches. There are lots of them, they are very deep, they are very muddy. We have cleaned them the best we can, okay? So On the day itself, it's uh, far more stressful than I expected because that's the first time I've been kind of the ultimate director of the race. Um, but even though we had various hiccups during the during the day, I, I survived. I have probably less hair than I started with, but that's just par for the course. That we had the three races on the day. The previous two, um, we had the 10 kilometer run and the muddy mile, and this time we did the 10 kilometer and five kilometer, and also the muddy mile. So it was interesting from that point of view for us too. The differences between the the three runs, um, the first five kilometers for the two main races um, is virtually identical as. Um, one loop of the 10k that the the 5k guys skip and they all arrive at the water station at the same the same point and the the 5k and then get a, a very big shortcut to get home and the majority of the the other five kilometers at the 10k are, are, is is shortcut at that point and then you get to the main really bad ditches we have um dirty ditch which if you see the sign somebody's misspelled and crossed out the b um which is quite a long but not particularly uh, deep in terms of mud but quite a deep ditch because you're, you're the top of the ditch is overhead height and then we have Shrek which is the one that everybody loves to hate which is chest deep on me so um, some of our smaller runners do struggle because I'm six foot three uh, we have the paddling pool which is uh, probably about waist deep freezing cold water for me and then Dirty Dirty, which is the last ditch that they all go through. So they've all have just completed nearly 10 kilometres or nearly 5 kilometres. And it's exceptionally gloopy and very difficult to get through. And then trying to get out at the far end is virtually impossible. They all have to pull each other out. So those are probably the highlights. And as you guessed, they're all feature mud. But that's what we do. We uh, claim to be the muddiest race in the world. And I think we're, it's a fair claim. If you've never done a mud run before, you've never seen a mud run before, um, you want to expect to get very dirty, very tired, and never want to wear any of the clothes or shoes that you've been wearing during the race ever again.
I think to win the race, you need to be uh, very, very fit and very strong. My advice to people when they come to a mud run is bring black bin legs. Some for your clothes and some for you because your clothes were filthy and so will you be. So take off your clothes, put them in the bin bag, put yourself in the bin bag and then you can go home relatively clean. Yeah, I think a couple of people. They were caught, I'm pretty sure. Well, we had lots of uh, smiley faces at the end of it and lots of people covered in mud so I, I would hope that whoever has enjoyed it so from that point of view yes it's been a success. And for us as the estate we've had lots of people uh, come through and uh, take part in the day so I haven't counted up the cash yet but I think we have probably will have made profit on the day and lots of good exposure which is one of the other reasons we do this event. Hi guys. Thank you.